Hey everybody, Thomas Joseph here. Now today I'm super excited to share with you some different varieties of winter squash. Some you might know, some you might not know, and who knows, maybe it'll encourage you to pick up a new variety at the supermarket and give it a try. Now squash, if you didn't know this, is actually, it's not a vegetable, it's actually a fruit, technically. And the squash family has two different categories to it. There are summer squashes and there are winter squashes. Summer squashes are the, the types of squash that you see in the farmer's market or in your grocery store like zucchini or yellow squash or patty pan squash. Those are all available, as the name suggests, within the summer months. Almost all of the varieties have a thin edible skin to them. Whereas the winter squash varieties, which as the name suggests, are available in the winter, even a little bit before the winter into fall. And the skin of the winter squash, with a few exceptions, is pretty much hard um, and inedible and it needs to be peeled away. This is probably the most well-known winter squash here in the United States. It is a butternut squash. The inside is usually a very vibrant colored orange flesh on the interior. Now, I usually cut butternut squash lengthwise so that I could scoop out the seed. The skin of the butternut squash is pretty waxy and crisp, I would say. It's not dull at all, but look at how beautiful and orange the interior is. This is actually the perfect shape of a butternut squash. This end down here is pretty uniform and even, and the neck is very even as well. It's not curled or gooseneck, but Butternut squash is fantastic if you roast it. It's really great in soups. I would say the one thing, if you are planning on making a puree or a soup out of this, I would recommend with all of these squashes that you steam it instead of boiling it. Boiling it infuses the squash with more water content, so you're gonna get a mild flavor. If you steam it, it's less water that's introduced and you'll have a stronger puree or soup in the end. Butternut squash seeds are really fantastic as well. You can scoop these out, separate the little fibers from the seeds, and you can toast them in the oven with a little bit of spice and salt, and they're really fantastic. Now, probably one of my favorite autumnal winter squashes is this guy here, and I'm not sure that you've seen these in the marketplace. They're usually available at farmer's markets. And at some specialty supermarkets, you're starting to see them, and this is a delicata squash. Now, the color of a delicata squash, it can go from this pale yellow color to a little bit more of an orangey color, but it almost always has these long stripes of green. Now, delicata squash, especially the smaller, younger versions, have a tender skin that you can actually eat. Now, I would recommend for delicata squash, you can do one of two things. You can either cut it in half lengthwise and scoop out the seeds like I would for butternut squash, or you can actually cut this into rounds scoop out the seeds and then roast these. Again, you'll get a really great caramelized flavor. You're gonna condense the flavors with roasting because you're evaporating all of that moisture and you'll get some nice caramelization and you can actually eat the skin, which is nice. And tossing this into salads would be fantastic. And again, the seeds here are edible as well. Another squash variety that's available in the autumn winter months is spaghetti squash. And spaghetti squash gets its name from the spaghetti-like strands that are inside of this fruit here. Now, most spaghetti squash has this yellow exterior. You wanna make sure when you buy it at this supermarket, you wanna make sure that the skin, the exterior is quite hard. You can actually knock on it. You don't want it to be soft at all. And let me cut this guy in half. Once you cook it, all of these little strands of the spaghetti squash will separate out. You can take a fork to it and actually coax them away from one another and it creates something that looks like spaghetti or pasta and you could use it in a very similar way as you would pasta. You can dress it up with some tomato sauce and some cheese and it's fantastic. Since squash is very high in moisture, what I would recommend is that you either cut it in half lengthwise, scoop out the seeds and roast it in an oven. That will encourage a lot of the moisture to be released from the fruit and you'll end up with a, a more flavorful, less watery squash in the end. Some people also steam it. I just tell people to stay away from boiling it because you're, again, in, introducing it to a large amount of water. It's going to saturate the spaghetti squash and in the end, you're going to have a lighter flavor. Acorn squash is another variety of squash that's available in autumn and winter. It's very popular here in the United States. 
Now, acorn squash usually has this really dark emerald green exterior to it. Sometimes it does have a little bit of an orange tinge to certain parts of the fruit. The body of the squash has nice ridges to it, like this fluted edge here, which makes it really pretty if you slice it into rounds. But most people cut this into wedges and roast it in the oven. It's fantastic. If you find smaller acorn squash, something that's a little bit smaller in size, you can actually cut it in half, scoop out the seeds, roast it whole, and you can stuff it with things like a rice stuffing, a wild rice stuffing, or you can serve anything in it, like a salad. Now. A squash that's getting really popular these days in the United States, especially in and around New York, it's popping up on a lot of menus, is this kabocha squash. When you buy it in the store or at the farmer's market, you want something that has this nice olivey green color to it. It has a speckled appearance. It's slightly ridged, but not as defined as the acorn squash. And it has a really similar flavor to a pumpkin or butternut squash. There are many different varieties. It has a nice mustardy color flesh here. It's not as starchy, I would say, as butternut squash. It has a lighter texture to it when it's cooked. But again, this is fantastic. If you cube it up, you can add it to soups and stews. It's great for roasting as well. The skin on this one, unfortunately, isn't edible, so I would encourage you to remove it before you add it to soups or stews. But if you haven't given it a try, please do. Last but not least is a cheese pumpkin. And cheese pumpkin and sugar pumpkins are the two varieties of pumpkins that are, I would say, most widely used in the United States for cooking. They are lower in fiber, higher in starch, and they have less water than a lot of other pumpkin varieties. So don't go cutting up that pumpkin that you bought for your jack-o'-lantern and try and cook it. It's not gonna have that great of a flavor and it's gonna have a lot of moisture to it. So this pumpkin variety is really great for savory applications. So you can roast it, you could put it into soups, you can make a, a beautiful pumpkin bisque, that would be fantastic. But it's also great in sweet applications as well. Roast it, puree it, and you can use it to make a delicious pumpkin bread, a pumpkin pie. Uh, the one thing you wanna make sure that you do if you're substituting it for canned pumpkin in your recipe is you might need to strain out some of the excess moisture by suspending it in a little bit of cheesecloth over a bowl and letting any excess moisture drip out. Again, the seeds here are completely edible, so you can toast those up with a little bit of spice. It's really great to go. And there you go, guys, a little guide into winter squash wonderland. I would encourage you to find some different varieties, try them out at home, roast them. That's my number one tip. Now, if you have any kitchen conundrums, whatever your conundrums may be, reach out to us using the hashtag Kitchen Conundrums. And as always, guys, visit MarthaStewart.com for many more recipes, tips, and tricks. Enjoy, guys.